drafting worldwide, wide, wide. Welcome back to the Revit Garage Project. When Revit elevations are already set up from the very beginning, as we had talked about in the past, it's basically these symbols that define the elevations. So just to talk about those again very quickly, if I look at this symbol right here and I click on the little triangle part, this line shows up. So right now, what this line represents is your field of view. So if I would pick this line up and move it here, it's really going to be a section that's cutting through the building and I'm cutting through this door and I won't be able to see any of this stuff back here. I can demonstrate that by double clicking on that and you can see that that's actually a section view. So if I go back to my plan view, first floor, and I click on this little triangle and I bring this back here and then click it again, now you can see that I actually see that elevation view. So the one thing I can do is I can just go around and click these and make sure that they're actually where they're supposed to be. The other thing that can happen with these is this line can sometimes end up being something like that where I'm not going to see this part of the building. I'm just going to move it over and make it real drastic. So right now, if I look straight ahead, I would not see this window. So if I double click that, you can see I can only see the very end of the building there. So I'm going to go back to my floor plan. I'm going to click that and I'm going to put this back in place, stretch this out as needed. And I can even move it up a little bit like that. So the next thing is these elevation symbols are very are a very big departure from what traditional elevation symbols would look like. So I can change the look of these. So to actually do this, to change the look of these, I'm going to select it and I'm going to edit my type. And under here it has graphics, elevation tag, and it's shown as a half inch square. So I'm going to choose elevation mark body circle filled arrow. I'm going to say OK, apply that. And now I have these things that look like more traditional elevation symbols. So what will happen eventually is these things will get populated whenever I put these elevation views onto sheets. So that was just a little quick recap of what these should look like, how they work. Let's go to the elevation views by going to our project browser and I'll just click on my east elevation. So the first thing that I notice right now is my crop region is visible. All these things, my levels, none of them are lined up. So I'm going to, first of all, bring these over just a little bit past the building. And I want them to all line up. And then I'm going to bring this side over. So I'll start out up here. And I'm going to select it, grab the little tiny dot, and I'll bring them in about right there. And I'll do the same with this one. They should snap into place. Sometimes it'll grab four of them, sometimes it won't. And this one right here, I'm just going to bring this dot back just so that it, the line is underneath the word completely. Okay. So I can show this in a few different views. I can have this right now is if I come down to my visual style, this is hidden line. If I did wireframe, it would show everything going through the building, so I don't want to do that. And I could also show it in realistic. So right now, whenever I show this as realistic, I never actually went in and assigned a siding. So I'm just going to select that wall. That's my custom wall I made from the very beginning. And I'm going to go back in and prep this for my elevation view. So under structure, I'm going to click edit. And for my finish, which is three quarter inch, instead of having a by category material, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to come down here to this AEC materials and I'm going to look for a siding. So I don't think there is a, any kind of uh, vinyl siding as a default material. So we're going to look for something that's similar to this. I think it might be called clapboard or something. So, so once I've found that, it's called siding clapboard, I have to actually hit this little tiny arrow 
and that puts that material into my current project. This is just looking at all the ones I have available, but I have to hit the little tiny arrow to add them to my current project. So I select that, say apply, okay, and I can also come up here to graphics and say use render appearance, and if I wanted to change the color of my siding, I should be able to do that as well under my appearance. And it's basically using this image right now, so if I wanted to try to change the color, I don't know if it's going to do anything or not. So I'll just pick a random color here, like a green that would stand out. I say apply, okay, okay, apply, okay, and it didn't do anything to that color. So if I wanted to use a different color signing, then I have to actually find an image with that. So that's what this would look like in realistic view, and this is probably how I would end up printing that. Bring this back just a little bit. And just to show you real quickly in hidden line, it looks like that. And I could look at shaded, which I'm not a big fan of, consistent colors. So I really think the realistic is the best view for this. So at this point, I could start annotating. So to annotate this, first of all, I have something going on with these windows. So the one is brown, as one is white. So let's talk about windows a little bit. So to fix these windows, basically what's going on is the one is has the sill on the inside, and the other one doesn't. So if I look at this window, I have to figure out which one is which. So. I'm assuming this wooden part should be on the inside and that this white part should be on the outside. So all I have to do to change that is I can click on this window and I should be able to flip the instance. So flip facing, so I just right click, flip facing, and now the white's on the outside. The other thing that I need to make sure of, whenever I place windows, I want those to have a head height, meaning the top of the window should be at 80 inches or 6 foot 8 inches. So I can take that out and I can make that 6 foot 8 and now the top of the window is actually pretty close to aligning with the top of the door because this should be an, a 6 foot 8 door. So the head height of that is 6 foot 8 and the only difference is we have the brick mold or the trim around the door whereas we don't have that with the windows. So. At this point, I would just kind of take a look at the rest of these and get those into the same order as the other. So like this little top foundation, I can click that, click that little button right there, bring this up, clean that up a little bit, maybe bring all of these out a little bit, turn my visual style to realistic. Click that, right click, flip facing, make sure the head height is at 80 inches or 6 foot 8. And that's looking pretty good. We have some extra levels in there. I'll show you what those are for later. I basically just created those to see how much attic space I would have. And I can go to south, change my visual style realistic, doors look good, click this, click the little button there, the four's in the way, bring this over, bring this little dot up, clean that up, make those look good, click this, bring those ends over this way, look at west, and Looks like I have a different scale for, that's eighth inch, eighth inch, eighth inch, this one's three sixteenths. So I'm going to make these three sixteenths to match. You can see these got a little bit smaller. I'm going to change the scale so that they're all the same size. And I'll clean this up a little bit.
So now that once I have everything cleaned up and looking good, I can come in here and start by getting rid of the levels that I don't use or don't need. So I'm just going to delete those. I have all the view settings correct, so I'm going to also turn my crop ridge invisible off. I'm going to put some slope arrows on this roof, so I'm going to come up to annotate and I'm going to basically stay in the, this annotate category here. So I am going to start out by looking for my slope, so spot slope, and I'm just going to choose this right here, drop that, and instead of having this arrow, I'm going to come up here while that's still selected, I'm going to change that to a triangle. And I'll select it again, come up, change that to a triangle. I got my 912 roof pitch there. Go through and do the same thing on the other side. It's pretty easy to tell that they're both the same, but might as well just throw that on there. Then I need to call out the siding. So I'm going to come up to text, and I'm going to use this two segment leader every time, or 99% of the time. So I'm going to start by an angled leader, and then I'm always going to have a horizontal tag over to the text. And I can just call this something vinyl siding. So another one that I would call out here is this is a good place to add a note for your ridge line. I'm just going to call that ridge. I could come down here and throw some details in, in on this, but I'm not going to because I'm going to do that in our section view instead. And I could call out my footing. So I have an 8 by 16 concrete footing. And here I have 8 inch CMU foundation with parge with we'll say quarter inch thick waterproof parge and then I also need to call out my doors and windows so instead of actually doing a note for those what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my annotate category and I'm going to choose tag by category and I'm going to drop these tags on here and the problem with this is the numbering is all out of whack so this probably means that I've put 20 different windows in here and it's going by all the different ones that I put in so what I can do is I can double click this and I can make one and it, if I say you are changing the type parameter this could affect many elements yes so it'll update all those to one and I'm going to make that door number one as well so then I can go into my other views and I'm going to delete this tag I'm not sure how that got there so I'm going to go into my other views north and I'm going to tag this window as well I'll just drag the tag over there turn my crop region off or my crop region visible and I'll bring these in closer sometimes these have I think if I change them in one view they, they change in another view as well so we'll have to look out for that I already have all these materials called out in other views so I'm not going to call them out in this view as well what I am going to do is I'm going to turn my section off so if I do visibility graphics where I can come over here and I can click edit or I could type V, G on the, the keyboard. And I come up here, instead of model categories, I'm going to go to annotation categories. I'm going to scroll down here to sections. And I'm going to turn sections off. Uncheck the box. Say apply. OK. And it disappeared. Real quick, I'm going to just double check my head height. Still good. And I can move on to the next one. Okay, I'm going to adjust I'm in my south elevation now. I'm going to try moving these in. Hope it doesn't move in the other ones. I'm going to turn my sections off. VG, annotation categories, sections off, 
apply OK. Got rid of that. The only thing I need to label are these two doors. So I'm going to tag by category and I'm just going to put them right in there. And I can turn this leader off up here as well so that it doesn't actually have that leader. I'm just going to put it right there. Maybe ah, undo that and select this once again. And I'm just going to move this up in this space a little bit. And again, tag by category and drop it on this door here. Get up and move this back to where it was. So I have those two tagged. Everything else is looking good in this view. So I'm going to jump to my west view, turn my crop region off. These things look pretty good. I could probably bring them in a little bit like that. I could squeeze this over a little bit and then bring these in a little bit more. Clean that up. Have everything else called out. I will go ahead and put the the I'll put the spot slope on these two roofs or these two slopes just to clarify if there was any confusion or anything. And now I'm going to just real quickly go back through these, make sure that everything's looking good still. Keep on moving these a little bit closer and closer. And I think it's moving the other ones as well. Oh, looks good. Okay, so at this point I can go through and start to place these onto a sheet, see how they fit on a sheet. So the elevations are going to be A200 for the sheet. So I'm just going to right click on sheets, new sheet, 11 by 17, say OK. And I'm going to double click this and call this A200. And I'm going to change the name of this to elevations. You can see that all my text is in all caps. And I can fill out some of this BWD for the author, checked by BWD as well. My date needs updated. We are into February now. February 11th, 10th, I don't know. I have no idea what it is. Let's see, 11th, good guess. And now I can come up here and drag my elevations onto this, this sheet. So I got one there. And east, we'll make this one north. So I'm going to be pretty hard pressed to fit these at this 3 16 scale. I can try. If I clean things up, move things around, I could get that to look about like that, but I'm still not going to fit this one on. Uh, if I move this one up here, put this one down here, I could possibly get that to work. Doesn't look horrible, but I'm not a big fan of it. So let's just try cleaning these up a little bit for a minute. So after I go through and clean those up a little bit and go back to my sheet view, getting 200 elevations. And I'm going to clean up these things a little bit, make them look a little bit better. These drawing titles, I need for that big line hanging out there. Drop that there. Bring this up here. And they're still not going to fit side by side. So. At this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably change this to an eighth and see how it looks at that. So after I get all these views cleaned up at eighth inch scale, I'm going to go back to my sheet view, A200, and I'm going to easily be able to fit all four of these. And I really didn't have to do that many adjustments to this. So I will just put my east view there. And if I can, I really like to have these things line up. Just like the way that, that looks. So I'm just going to go to my annotate, do a detail line, and I'm just going to draw a temporary line over there. Pick this up, move it from there down to there. And now whenever you look across, things line up. <clears throat> Not 100% necessary, but I do like the added little touch of that. And this, just bring this down a little bit like that. And grab the other view so we have east and north and then I'm also going to come up here grab my south and west 
drag south on there and I'll grab west and put it up here again clean these up a little bit drag that in get this semi lined up with the one below it and same there and clean this up a little bit and if I wanted to I could come in here with my detail lines and I could draw some lines just to get things to line up so it's harder to grab things and I think I'm just going to leave that how it is everything lined up nice and neat I could move it like that and then grab this move it straight up and bring this one we'll do this one more time detail line from one of these lines looks like they are lined up pick this up move it up there everything that's called out needs to be called or everything that needs to be called out is called out and I don't need to do that in all these different views so these elevations should be good to go one last thing that I wanted to show you is at the beginning of the video I said that the elevation symbols would be populated once these elevations were actually on a sheet. So if we go back to our first floor plan, you can see these are numbered as they as I put them in. One, two, three, and four, and they are on sheet A200. So just make note of that whenever I go back to my first floor plan, those correspond to these views. So I can if I'm on the floor plan and I'm looking at this drawing and I say, hey, I'd really like to see what this side of the building looks like then I know that I need to go to sheet A200 and look at drawing number two so if I go to sheet A200 and look at drawing number two that is that north elevation just a nice feature and that's a basic way of coordinating the drawings